thoughts within, dear Lord, for here is where you dwell, in your kingdom nestled in my heart, where everything is well. I turn my thoughts within, dear God, and find pure love and peace, harmony, the watchword here, apparent doubt and discord cease. For here is where I find the truth, there is one, the all in all, the truth that makes me free to be, I heed its every call. I turn within, dear Lord, for there you dwell, in my heart of hearts, where all is well. The peace and joy that his spirit expressed I find is me, dear God, and make manifest I turn within, dear Lord, for there you dwell In my heart of hearts, where all is well The love, the peace and joy that his spirit expressed, I find his me, dear God, and make manifest. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living Lifeline series. It's a wonderful evening here in beautiful Kingston, Jamaica, and it is our joy to welcome each and every one of you to this hour of connectivity, liberty, love, and laughter. We have a very special guest with us, and I'll be telling you all about him in a little while. But as we begin in all things with God, I'd like to invite our pastor, Reverend John Scott, to set us off with an affirmative prayer. Thank you, Sandy, and it's a joy to add my own words of welcome to our Lifeline events evening and to ask you to join us in consciousness in this opening affirmative prayer. Let us know together that there is only one, one God, one mind, one infinite intelligence, one presence, one power, everywhere equally evenly present throughout all of creation and therefore right where we are right now as we participate in this conversation known as lifeline and i'm knowing that as we bless the spaces between us they become sacred space filled with the energy and the love and the joy and the liberty of the living god i know of present to this thing that the infinite mind of God fills his consciousness with every idea he needs to share that which we need to know and to understand so that each of us can take from his presentation what we need to continue the hero's journey into greater than we have ever experienced before. And so we bless each other and bless this conversation and know it is all and only God, and therefore it is all and only good. This word is released to law in thanksgiving for its perfect fulfillment, as our hearts sing a song of praise and a psalm of thanksgiving, that this is so, as together we say, and, and so, so it is. Thank you so much, Reverend John. And you know, friends, this wonderful experience that we call Lifeline, you know, it started just a little bit after what, what, what was called the lockdown last year, following the um, beginning of the COVID pandemic. And we saw it as an opportunity to provide some spiritual tools and strategies to enable all of us to rise above and consciously respond to the challenges that we were facing during these extraordinary times. And we had no idea then that it would be going on for as long as it did. And it's just become a, an amazing part of our spiritual practice. And this evening, we have an extraordinary guest with us. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about him. Uh, he has been an ordained minister for over 20 years. 
He served on the International Board of Directors of or, or what we call before, uh, before Centers for Spiritual Living, we had Religious Science International. So he served on that board and on the boards and advisory councils of several other nonprofit organizations. He received his doctorate of religious science in 2008 and was in pulpit ministry for over 20 years in Maryland, Florida, and California. Prior to that, now listen to this one. He was in law enforcement. He was a police officer. And that was for 24 years in Maryland and Florida. Isn't that amazing? He's the author of uh, Creating the Beloved Community, a handbook uh, for spiritual leadership. That's in 2017. And Sacred Thinking, Awakening to Your Inner Power, um, written in 2010 and has authored chapters in several spiritual and leadership uh, books. He will certainly tell you about his latest book when he comes on. He's perhaps best known for his blog on spiritual leadership, new thought, evolutionary, wordpress.com. He retired from pulpit ministry in, the early 20, in early 2015 and has been traveling the world with his, with his wife, Dorian Cotter Lockhart, while speaking and working with spiritual communities along the way. And we are so, so delighted and excited to have him with us. Please help me welcome you know, with open hearts our guest this evening to our lifeline, Reverend Dr. Jim Lockhart. Oh, Dr. Jim, it is so, so absolutely wonderful to have you. You are indeed one of our special heroes. And I'm gonna turn it over to you and to, to kick off on this wonderful topic, the hero within. Dr. Jim, over to you. Well, thank you so much, Sandra. And I wanna thank you and Dr. Jo Reverend John and all of the uh, team for inviting me and helping do all the logistics because I'm in France, uh, as, you, as you know, I'm living here now with my wife, Dorianne. And uh, we're, not, we're not traveling full-time anymore. We've, we've found a home and we're, we're very much enjoying it here. And the closest uh, religious science center to me is in Geneva, Switzerland, by the way. There is a center there. And we were just over there this weekend. So uh, it's wonderful to notice that we're around the globe in, in ever-increasing ways. Mm -hmm. So I, in terms of talking about the idea of the hero, it's something that's dear to my heart. I've, uh, I've worked primarily with the work of Joseph Campbell, who uh, some of your members may know he did a he did a television series back in the 80s called the power of myth that was broadcast over and over and over and over and uh it be, because it was so popular and it resonated with people and what that series did was speak to the idea of the hero's journey it spoke to the idea that what a hero is according to the mythology and by the way campbell studied the myths of the entire planet, and he mm -hmm. found that the hero myth was universal, that every culture that he studied around the world had a couple of things. One was a creation story, as you might expect, and the other was a hero myth, where the hero was called into, hero, into the heroic act, that something within the hero answered that call, and that the hero goes through a period of time of uncertainty, unknowing, of challenge, and overcomes that challenge and then returns with something bringing it back to the community and and within the heroic journey story that something that we return with is a greater realization of ourselves so we see it in the movies with indiana jones and star wars and the wizard of oz and all of those films are essentially uh the hero hero's journey in 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 the story form and in our own lives, I think our whole life can be a hero's journey from birth until we depart this uh, existence. And, it, and along the way, we have many dozens of hero's journey, journeys where we're, we're called out of ourselves, we're called into challenge, we're called into something that is very difficult. And what is, I think, what wants to happen there is we're looking for something to awaken within us that has not yet come forth or has not come forth very powerfully. 
So, you know, you might look at your own life and say, where have I been called out of myself? Where have I been put into challenges that I didn't think I could overcome? Uh, who, who are the heroes we admire? You know, when you look around uh, at all the people that are held up as heroic figures, quite often they went through this, this same process of being called into something that, you know, and sometimes the call is very interesting. The call can be something kind of starts as a little voice in your head that says it's time for me to go do something different or it's time to me to engage with something new. It can be where you're conscripted and, you know, you're, you're, you're conscripted into the military or something happens in your life that forces you into a new situation. Or it can be kind of an enticement. There's some wonderful Irish myths about a, a young boy that will be enticed through a hedge by a leprechaun or something. And when he goes through the hedge, He's in the new world. He's in the wasteland. It's like Dorothy uh, landing Wizard among the Oz. munchkins, you know, in the Wizard of Oz mm -hmm. and finding that yellow brick road that is doing what? It's leading her back home to realize that she always had what she needed. Mm -hmm. So this universal story is is multicultural. It's It's global. And I think it's what Ernest Holmes spoke to us about in terms of finding our own inner power and inner strength so that we can bring it to bear on the challenges of our lives, uh, to know the truth, to trust that that inner urge to express is something that we can trust and something that we have to have courage enough to allow to unfold. Um, I'm reminded of Marianne Williamson, who said, and I'm going to paraphrase her quote, but he said, she said, basically, our greater, greatest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our that greatest is fear is that we're powerful beyond measure because what, you know, then we don't have any excuses. Right. Mm -hmm. So the hero's journey is often, I think, our soul's intention to have us be more and more, more fulfilled as who we came here to be. Uh, in my own wow. journey, you know, you, you mentioned, I'm sorry, Dr. John, yeah. No, no, I just said, wow. You know. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. In my own journey, I went into law enforcement when I was 20. And I think I did, looking back, you know, I didn't know this at the time, but looking back on it, I realized I was very insecure in my own sense of authority. And what I thought I could do was where my authority. I thought, you know, when I put on the uniform and the badge and the gun, that people would have to respect me. Um, you quickly find out that isn't true. Mm. And But what did happen <laughs> over the early part of my career was I found that I could do that job. I could do it well. I could stand up to difficult times and I could bring out more of myself than I knew that I had going into that job. And the same thing happened in ministry. You know, I, I, when I first went into ministry, I was like very uncertain about, you know, did I have what it would take to, to really be at this level of service? Um, was I smart enough? Was I strong enough? Was I able to, you know, keep all those, all those things in the air that a minister has to keep in the air when you're, when you're in charge of a spiritual community? And, you know, as I went into it, I began to realize that I could, but see, that had to be called forth out of me. I had to answer the call in order for that to rise to the surface. And I had to kind of, as Dr. my, my dear friend, Dr. Arlene Bump would say, I had to go out on the skinny branches uh, of life and take a chance that I would be supported. So part of being a yes. hero is being in that space of uncertainty of support. Am I going to get through this? Am I going to be able to take this on? Am I going to be able to have the courage and whatever else needs to come forward, whether it's love or compassion or strength or, or whatever. So the hero, the hero motif, as we call it in mythology, is incredibly powerful. Um, and we see it everywhere. Martin Luther King's journey uh, was, a, was a heroic journey. Um, you know, the ascendancy Jesus. of, sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. Dr. I was saying Jim. Jim. As you're speaking, I'm thinking of Jesus, the way Shoah, the Christ. Oh, of course, of course, and and the final the final thing with the, his going to the crucifixion, understanding that that was a necessary step on his path, mm -hmm. and he, right. he the night before in Gethsemane, of course, he has his doubts. He takes 
he takes the he That's takes his three main faculties with him, Peter, John, and James, with his strength and love and wisdom, and they fall asleep. So quite often when you're facing the big challenge, the inner faculty, you know, the, the disciples represent his inner faculties. And I don't always have my faculties to call on in those moments of doubt and fear. So he had to wake them up. And, he, and you know, then he had to wake them up again because they fell asleep again as the Roman soldiers were approaching. So, of course, that's the alt, that's the penultimate sense of the hero's journey is I, I'm willing to risk my life and put my life on the line for something that is so incredibly important. And, yeah. and I love Joseph Campbell says so that Christ, Jesus went to the cross like a bridegroom to the bride, recognizing yes. that he could not rise unless he was crucified. So the recognition that, that what is mine to do yeah. is so powerful, mm -hmm. you know, and, and sometimes we have to put ourselves into great peril and great sacrifice in order to achieve a greater idea, a greater possibility. You know, Dr. Jim, I'm listening to you and I'm thinking that all the heroes that I can think of were on a quest for something. And so they lived in the question Yes, of what my much. purpose very much and, and and that question i think is is a it's something that all of us ask ourselves at some time during our own journeys mm -hmm. you know and, and if i may add to that um rev the the every one of us goes through that am i good enough do i have what it takes and, you know, where I sit in my little neck of the woods, I can recall many, many times when I have doubted myself. And I might look at someone else. I might look at you, at, uh, Reverend Elmer, um, who was our beloved past, um, you know, and will I ever get treatment right? Will I ever do it as good as? Um, and the fact is that every one of us goes through this experience in spite of, we do it anyway, you know? So yeah. I'm really, I'm, 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 that excites me yeah. because, you know, it means that there's nothing wrong with me or with any, other, any, any of us, we just are human. Yes, and I think the hero's journey is calling something out of us that as of now, we haven't expressed fully. It might, again, it can be anything. It can be courage, it can be love, it can be joy. Um, but, but often there is that kind of a, it is a quest. Mm -hmm. and, and there are increasing levels of challenge as we move along the path. And we also have to identify who our teachers are. Yes. You know, yes. and there are teachers that teach us positively and teachers that teach us negatively. And to be able to sort of, uh, you know, come to understand what, what is there for us to learn. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's quite wonderful. And to do some of the teachers. <laughs> yes. And what yes. did you say, Reverend John? And to? That last thing and to said. bless the teachers, even ah, those, gotcha. those that are to bless all the teachers. Yes, yeah, yes. Because yeah. even, those maybe, even those that may be teaching a negative lesson um, are That's to be right. blessed because without that, you wouldn't have the answer to the questions on the quest. Mm hmm. Yes. yes. You know, okay. um, practitioner Carol Charlton, um, she makes a really good comment. She says, so the hero's journey is going in search of the truth that sets us free from whatever we perceive uh, to be our limitation. Yeah, it sets us free from our limitation in any particular area, whatever it may be. And we may need a bunch, you know, somebody like me, I needed a bunch of hero's journeys because I had a lot of areas where I was felt limited and constrained so my light and what happens is life presents us with those mm -hmm. um you know the the spirit acting through us allows us to experience what we need to experience and then again we have to say yes to the challenge it is you know there is there is a uh, joseph campbell talks particularly about those who say no to the call mm -hmm. that in what uh, however that call comes said no i refuse to take the journey i turn away and then that, that's a lesson that remains unlearned, but it will show up again in some form or fashion. And it may yep. show up more painfully than it would have otherwise. 
Okay, and um, Reverend Sonia, she said she asked this question. Could it be that almost everyone has, without thinking, done something which could have been considered heroic even once in a lifetime? Oh, of course. And sometimes well, we I don't realize we when we're expressing at the higher level. You know, we, we, we just sometimes you can have a sense of yourself is not enough, as we talked about. And you might do something that is so kind and loving and you do it without because you're focused on something else over here that you're afraid of. You know, it's sort of it's almost an offhand thing where maybe you help a child or you say something that helps someone else through a difficult time or something like that, because the her hero's journey doesn't have to be big things. Mm -hmm. it, it can be raising a child beautifully. It can be helping someone who's in, in mm -hmm. some kind of trouble or some kind of issue. It can be doing a prison ministry. It can, it can be anything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we hear about, of course, the great stories. And, and certainly those are important because they tend to have, in many ways, the greatest impact. But in terms of uh, mm -hmm. our individual life, it's so important to mm -hmm. have the small impacts and the small acts of kindness and goodness. Um, Reverend John? Yes. I was just saying it, it doesn't have to be the international or national level. No. Um, as Dr. Jim is saying, um, heroism can come in very, in very small ways. Last week, I met a lady in the supermarket who I don't remember from Adam or Eve. And she, you, don't, you won't remember me, but about 40 years ago, you gave me an affirmation and I still have it. And I use it every day. Yeah. Um, she had come to me, French Elma. I don't remember at all, but I mean, so you have no idea how many, how many, how many people touch, and right. and to whom you are a hero. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's not going to be a statue of me in, in Hero's yeah. Park, but you yeah. you never know who you will yeah. you, you know, um, I grew up on a, a a very steady diet of comic books. Uh, Marvel Comics and DC Comics, Aquaman, Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman. Oh, those were my heroes. And to my mind, I had this notion that heroes, you had to fly and you had to have superpowers. And you had to, there's always a, a villain, but the, super, the superhero was able to, you know, is always able to overcome the, the villain and, 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 and thrive. So, you know, I've just come to recognize that one doesn't have to, fly in the air or um, have um, heat vision or anything of that nature. But just to be able to raise a kid, that's, that's a superpower. To be able to maybe go through a divorce or to work in some jobs to survive the pandemic, that's superhero behavior, you know? Um, wow. I have two comments that I'd like to share. Um, Carol, um, this, or other Carol, we have two Carols on our practitioner team. Carol Campbell is asking, isn't it true also that heroes don't necessarily set out to be heroes? They just seek to do good? Oh, absolutely. And I think, it, you know, I like to think of the hero as having something awakened within the one who is being mm -hmm. heroic. And, you know, where you're dragged kicking and screaming into the situation because you're terrified of it. And yet, <laughs> you stand, you rise to the occasion, as they say, something within you awakens and, and shows up. And it's not that you set out to be your hero. It's not, maybe you're not even recognizing yourself as a hero, mm -hmm. but you're doing something good or something kind or something wise, and you're growing as a result. Mm -hmm. um, because that's the important thing, I think, in our own development, our own growth, that we benefit by doing good. We, we benefit in terms of a greater realization of our potential. And the world is served when that happens because we are then able to contribute at a higher level uh, uh, just because of we've, we've revealed this quality that was maybe latent or hidden within us. Now it's out in the open and we know we can do it. We know we can be uh, effective and helpful and caring. And, and again, depending on the nature of, of mm -hmm. the deed that's called for. Yes, and um, we have, that's awesome. From Carol Charlton, she says, it's empowering to realize that I am on a hero's journey, slaying as I go along the dragons and witches and gnomes that I encounter to realize my spiritual magnificence. 
an amazing revelation. Yeah, I, I believe so, Carol. I endorse that a hundred percent. You know, <laughs> um, Reverend Sonia, she says, I cannot swim. I saw my niece drowning, jumped into the deep end of a pool, grabbed her, put put her at the edge of the pool, pumped water out of her, then suddenly realized that I had, but what I had done and began to tremble as what had just happened, absolutely no, she had no awareness during the act. Oh, wow. What a That's wonderful. That's something. What a wow. wonder, yes. In other words, you know, is, this, is this what we teach? You have the power within you and something about ourselves, we limit it. We don't let it express. And then occasionally we forget, right? They have the, the stories of the mothers lifting up a car and and things like yes. that 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 just show this inner power that is it's already there we just haven't necessarily given ourselves permission up until this moment to express it and, and when we think that that power has all knowledge all wisdom all ability all competence all everything and so i would not be surprised that the ability to swim occurred in that moment because you know with the human sense of i can't is turned off yeah. and you know save this young woman was Absolutely. just there in the begin in the front of her mind yeah all oh. limitation is put aside at least temporarily right yeah and yeah and it's it's so amazing to, it's amazing to see that and yet you can almost count on it happening I mean, if that child had been in the water and she hadn't been there, someone else probably would have jumped in because that's our nature as human beings. We, we mm -hmm. do rush to help when we see someone in trouble. It's really quite, uh, it's quite, it's, it's normal, even though it's often surprising to us. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a study done on strangers who help people mm -hmm. uh, at risk of their own lives. There was a park ranger who saw someone falling off of a cliff and reached and grabbed them, and the park ranger started to go off the cliff, and another park ranger ran up and grabbed that park ranger and pulled both of them back up. And that first park ranger especially, in that moment, he said, I just didn't have any concern about my life. I just had to help this person. I, it wasn't even a thought. It was just a reaction. And we see that kind of thing happen uh, you know, more frequently than we might pay attention to. We see the ones that get into the news, but this kind of thing happens all the time. We have that innate sense of oneness that shows up in those moments. Mm -hmm. So um, in those adrenaline heightened moments, you know, as um, Reverend Sonia says, it's, you know, there are thousands of stories like this, you know, and, and it, it, this all speaks to our ability to help others without thinking. Um, but in a, in a regular day-to-day -day moment, when I might have to get a report done or um, there's another issue with a child or something, you know, there, there might not be the pumping of that adrenaline. Right. What do we do? What can we do to get to that place where we become selfless or we just draw from the source without even letting our, our ego stand in the way? What do we do? Well, I'd say where you have time to think about it, that's where you have to do your spiritual work on a daily yeah. basis. You have to, be, you know, it's like being, yes. having that spiritual practice sufficient to the point where your reactive self is heightened. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's the old line about the, I, I, the nuns used to tell me that when I was in Catholic school that they wanted to be so prayed up that when they walked down the street, people would be healed just by being in their presence. Mm -hmm. and, and it's all based on, you know, mm. I think there is a direct, I don't think, I know, there is a direct correlation or connection between how we behave on a daily basis and what our daily spiritual practices are. And Absolutely. It, it, I, and, I think about... Mm -hmm. No, please. Dr. Sorry, Dr. Jim. No, go ahead. I was, I was, I was just thinking about you know even playing a musical instrument or, or the practice so that so that when it comes to performance, performance. time you are not you're not thinking about the mechanics anymore mm -hmm. because you are so practiced that it's perfection is your default you mm -hmm. and you exactly. perform exactly. you step out of the, the practice into 
the performance of something that's bigger than you and greater than you and more beautiful than you could have imagined. People ask me, my students will sometimes ask me, do I have to do all the steps in treatment? Can I just know the truth? Mm-hmm. And I said, well, let me tell you a story. My wife is a violinist and she used to be, now she's amateur. She was professional for a number of years and she played in New York at Carnegie Hall and places like that and with orchestras and concerts and so forth. And every day during that time and to this day, she plays her scales every day. The basic that, 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 that thing, you know, that's the most basic thing you can do as a musician. And she knows them so well, but she does them every day to remind herself of what she needs to transcend. Mm -hmm. Because a a really top musician, a really virtuoso musician will take the music and play the notes, but like no one else can. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to do with my spiritual practices. I do my treatment every day with the steps as, as I was taught to do them. And I also, throughout the day, I probably have thoughts that are, I hopefully, that are just, you know, based on that practice, my thoughts tend to be elevated more than they would be otherwise. So then I then when it's like, oh, I have a choice whether or not to step in and help out here, I'm much more likely to make it because I've been, yes. I've been steeped in that quality of thinking and feeling that recognizes my oneness, recognizes my power, recognizes my connection with spirit recognizes yep. that I am one with everyone and everything. If I haven't been doing my practice, mm-hmm. then what happens? You know, it's like when you don't you don't weed the garden, the weeds just show up on their own. It's the same Absolutely. kind of a thing. You know, you you were in law enforcement for two and a half decades of your life. Um, was it after that that you discovered uh, religious science or were you a practicing metaphysician during that period? And how did that help you in your work as a law enforcement officer? I discovered religious science uh, about seven years before I retired. So Mm -hmm. I've been well into my career, but uh, I still had a little ways to go. Mm -hmm. Um, It helped me immeasurably. (laughs) I'm sorry. Yes. (laughs) It helped me immeasurably. I used to I used to have my treatments written out, and I if there was between police calls, I would sit and do treatment. Uh, I would visualize how I wanted to be if the situation got dangerous, or how I wanted to be able to see what I needed to see, and how I wanted to be able to help people and things like that. How I wanted to control my emotions so I didn't overreact mm-hmm. uh, when when the adrenaline gets going and and things like that. So I had learned how to affirm well before I found the teaching, but what the teaching brought me was using the same technology to go way beyond what I could imagine, because you, you understand you're connected to the whole nature of spirit, so you can you can bring things to bear that you could never have thought of on your own. Um, it's sort of, I, I tell people, it turbocharged my ability to visualize in the sense of creating a much broader field of expectation. Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow. Thank you for that. Um, Reverend Sonia uh, says, have a mm-hmm. go ahead, um, Reverend John. Uh, Dr. Holmes talked about, about the mystics revealing the eternal verities. Um, and, and of course, that is that there's a living presence within us. You, do you think that all heroes are mystics mm. in their That's own true. right? I think I define a mystic as someone who is familiar with the inner life. And I think we're all potentially mystics and some of us develop that more than others, but I think we're all, we're all standing. I kind of, we have, we have a a foot in the physical world and a foot in the spiritual world in a sense. That's a crude way of putting it, but it, you know, so we're both, we're both, we're both mystic and physical linear beings. Uh, the question is, it's like anything else, what are we developing? Because I think the mystical aspect of us has to be developed so that we can realize it more fully. Mm-hmm. Mm. And, the, yeah. and, and so that God becomes a different position. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. I mean, you're, 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 tr- you're prayed up in a sense, you know, you, you've got to, to the point where your default, your default thinking is in the direction you want to go where you mm-hmm. automatically think in the right direction as opposed to having to remember 
five minutes after you're, you've been in fear that, oh, I could do a treatment here or, oh, I could see this in a different way. Mm -hmm. You want it to be your first impulse. Mm -hmm. uh, Reverend Sonia speaks about practicing the art of love on the most unlovable persons we have to meet. She puts unlovable in parentheses. Yeah. You know, that, 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 that is part of being a hero, you know, I think. Yeah, those are your teachers. I'd say anyone that yeah. irritates you is your teacher. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and the those other, um, Carol is concluding. She says, so then, do I hear you say, the journey of the hero is a never ending story, that there's no rest, that it's on and on endlessly? Well, I think there's periods of rest, but I think you're all, you've always got something going on. I mean, we're, you know, I want to be a lifelong learner and the universe seems to uh, have the same idea for me in terms of when I feel like, oh, I've got it all, I can rest now, something else will pop up. Mm -hmm. But there are periods of, I call it, rec I think recreation is a wonderful word where you're recreating, mm -hmm. you know, how am I going to be from this, I, 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 since the last time I recreated, I have a new consciousness in some areas of my mm -hmm. life. How do I want to express yes. that uh, in a different way in, in my marriage or in my friendships or where I live or uh, whatever in whatever regard it is? I think we're constantly uh, given the opportunity to grow and develop and express in new ways. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Maren Sonia says, Dr. Holmes, I think, said a hero is who the people love. One of, oh God, I just went away. One of the most beloved nationals has not been officially made a hero. Um, and she says, any thoughts? A hero well, is one that people love. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think that a, a lot of heroes are not even known uh, because their heroic acts were internal and they affected people in a, in a way that didn't garner a lot of attention. Um, another mm. thing I think is don't depend on official institutions to validate whether or not something is heroic. Uh, I used to say that to, you know, when I would, when I would work with young ministers, I'd say, you know, don't worry about your ordination because unlike some denominations, we grant ordination l later after your license as opposed to when you are. And I said, you know, ideally your ordination should be a surprise. Mm -hmm. be, be, not that you're constantly paying attention and you know how close am I how close am I you should be doing your work following your calling and knowing that when it's proper to have it recognized it'll be recognized now wouldn't that be a nice way to uh to express rather than trying to keep track of everything that you know there are all the boxes d dotted and all the i's crossed and the t's crossed uh and and feeling anxious about it Mm. You know, mm. so I think that's the, a similar thing with sometimes external recognition. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some institutions I wouldn't want to recognize me as a hero because mm. I don't like their value. Mm -hmm. uh, Indeed. You know, what Indeed. was it? Uh, yeah. Somebody said I wouldn't join a club that would have me as a member. Uh, but, you know, that kind of uh, that kind of a thing. Oh, I love that. Um, Steve, Steve is loving your use of the word recreation. Mm, yes. He says each time there is growth, we are recreating. Uh, uh, I like that too. Yeah. Um, you know what? You know, you, you've had an interesting life and I, I am seeing that. But was there a sense of feeling called to ministry in terms of your own hero's journey? Yes, uh, that came along probably when I'd had about two years of science of mind classes and, and really what drew me was to be a teacher. And I'd always wanted to be a teacher. I'd always known I was a teacher when I was in law enforcement, a good portion of my career, I was either part-time training, or at one point I was the commander of the police Academy uh, for the County for a number of years. So I've always loved to teach. Hmm. And um, when I saw that this was more a teaching than a preaching, uh, it drew me in and the ideas of it and the principles of it and the practices of it. And it became clear to me about, the, again, I say two years into the to classwork that I was going to go into ministry and be, and teach mm -hmm. the science of mind for the rest of my life. And, and we're so glad that you did because now here you are sharing your wisdom with us. There you go. Well, thank you. And uh, I have to tell you, you're not as glad as I am. <laughs> Because oh. I don't think I could have made a life any other way. I mean, really, oh, I think I've benefited yes. so much by having this teaching in my life. And I think 
having the opportunity to teach it yes. probably made it easier for me to embody it than uh, than if I hadn't been doing that. Mm-hmm. And and you 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 know, you know you, 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 you've been promising to come to Jamaica for a long time, you know. Hmm? What's that, Rob? You've been promising to come to Jamaica for a long oh. time. I know. I haven't been to Jamaica for twenty five years. He he had actually been here uh, when he was in the police, force, right? Yeah, I came on vacation once, but I didn't know you then. <laughs> no, no. So, <laughs> You're so <I> relieved. <laughs> No, no, no. I, 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 you know, and we had the conversation a number of times about coming back. I will have it again with Dorian uh, yes. because we, you know, we, we like to go someplace warm in the winter. We're, we're actually going to Mexico for a couple of weeks in January before the Centers for Spiritual Living Convention in California. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll get, I'll get that conversation going again. Yes. So, so <laughs> you've retired and... Sorry, Reverend. <laughs> I'm, I'm exactly. I was going. To, I want to say something. You, you, you said that there have been um, heroes' journeys for you, and I'm wondering if it isn't that it's different legs of the one journey in eternity. Mm. Well, I think the whole life is one hero's journey, and but within yes. that, you know, to grow in different ways, it's sort of it's sort of like if you look at if you look at the Old Testament in terms of a human development story, each character brings a new aspect yep. of being human that wasn't present before. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. I think this is Absolutely. the way we live our lives. We we grow and you know, or at least we're given the opportunity to grow. I mean, some of us sadly decide not to. But you know, you're given you you mm-hmm. develop in one area and then all of a sudden something happens over here and you need to develop in another area and, and back and forth and back and forth. And I, that to me is the juice of life is having that opportunity to grow and, and to meet new people and be in different circumstances and and things like that. I think that's the that's vitality mm-hmm. of life. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, so tell us a little bit about your writing. You know, you have a couple of books out and um, the latest one. I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. And I'm sure our, read, our listeners would like to. Okay. To well, the, uh, the, the one from 2017 is called Creating the Beloved Community. And it's, a, it's about spiritual leadership. And it's about not the nuts and bolts of it so much as who do I need to be to be the best version of myself as a leader? And this is for anyone in any position of leadership. It could be a, on a board or a practitioner or a minister in our organization, or there's other ways to be in leadership as a lay leader or whatever. And it really is about looking at what do I, what do I need to be mm-hmm. in my being state in order to give my best service as a leader in order to have the best experience of being a leader. Um, and there's been a number of communities that have worked with it. It's taught in the ministerial school at uh, the Centers for Spiritual Living, and Unity is now picking it up and have asked me to do some presentations for them based on it. Uh, I'm working on a sequel called Being the Beloved Community that I hope mm-hmm. to have finished around the end of the year, and that is more into the nuts and bolts. It is more into things like board recruitment and board selection and and uh, things like that and, and prosperity within the community and abundance and things, those kinds of things. Uh, again, not, the, not how to count the money, but basically how to think about the money, how to be a leader in terms of recognizing the value and, and the values that people can bring to the community, not just in terms of financial commitment, but in terms of support of, of their time and, and being present for you and being a being a consciousness in the community that represents the spiritual community to the world outside and mm-hmm. so forth. It's very and interesting. I do my blog, that you, of course. Wow. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. So, sorry. Before you go on, um, Dr. Jim, it's very interesting that you speak about, about um, the, the being the beloved mm-hmm. community, the Temple of Light. Light we have just gone through a strategic planning exercise, mm-hmm. which is very transformational in its essence because we've been around forty years. Yeah. And, you know, we had a founder, very charismatic, powerful leader in Reverend Dr. Elma Lumsden. Mm-hmm. And um, but, you know, we are we're moving and growing and evolving. And it's, you know, how do we do so, you know, in a way that honors where we're coming from, but acknowledges where we are going and also um, opens up each of us as 
leaders of the church at the same time um, inspires the, the congregation to be part of this growth process. It's been very challenging, you know, so it would be really great to get some of your insights there. Yeah. Well, it is really challenging. I mean, I think we're going through, the whole planet is going through cultural change like mm. never before. Everything's speeding up. And um, amazing. so that, that requires that leaders be more expansive, more open. The, the, the days of the more or less autocratic leader are pretty much behind us, not totally, but they're, you know, it's fading away at diff in different places and different speeds. And the idea, like you say, of, of encouraging internal leadership, I, I like the idea of let's let's draw out the leader and everybody present and Absolutely. then get get them to catch a vision that is so powerful that they just can't not be a part of it. You know, uh, what would that look like and feel like to be part of that where people are attracted because there's an amazing vision and people are excited about it and they want to be a part of it. And that way. What I find in organizations that do that, and by organizations, I mean spiritual communities, is the anxiety around organizational maintenance goes away mm -hmm. because that's not the main focus anymore. Because for a lot of communities, just paying the bills has become the main focus or fixing the building yep. or you know, fill in the blanks in that area because yeah. they haven't really caught a big vision that everybody wants to be a part of. And what happens when you have a big vision is somebody shows up and says, oh, don't worry, I'll get the building in shape. And, and the money shows up to, to make sure that you have enough to operate on and pay the bills and that, that you know, everything gets taken care of because that's what, that's what places with a great vision have happened. And um, yep. that, that's the challenge. And it is a challenge. It's not like something you can just flip a light switch. It, it, it's, a, it's a cultural development process that has to unfold. And I think it sounds like you're on a pathway in that direction. Okay. Um, and your latest book? Absolutely. Like the one that you put, you put up on the screen? Oh, that's, that's the Creating the Beloved Community. That's this oh. one. Oh. Yeah. Um, oh. This is the one from 20. You know, the sequel, which is yeah, the sequel is not out yet. That's but this is available at Amazon. If that's if you, you guys have Amazon, right? Everybody else in the world seems to. Yeah, uh, we're in the world. Yeah, right, right. Um, they have Amazon France. It's different than Amazon <laughs> US, but uh, but anyway, yes. Yeah, so uh, and I do the blog, and then that doesn't cost anything, yes. and it's just the, the New Thought Evolutionary blog, and um, invite people to read that and comment and. Uh, you know, and so forth. And I hope they find it a value. And it's about leadership, but also it's, I write about basic spiritual principles and practices and how we can better, uh, better be better versions of ourselves. I just did one on how to deal with unfinished business in your life. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, there's difficult conversations you've been putting off or, you know, cleaning up the clutter in the garage or something like that, that holds us back. It sort of acts like uh, an anchor to our going mm -hmm. forward. So it's a matter of freeing up, freeing up, freeing up so that I'm fully available for what life is bringing to me now. Yes, you can't fill a glass that's already full, can you? No, you can't. Mm. No, uh, Dr. Sonia is asking, Reverend Sonia is asking um, about the role of music in spreading the word about the hero that lies within each of us. How can, can we use music to a more powerful effect around that regard? That's a, I, I think music adds to everything. Of course, I'm married to a musician, but uh, I do think that music adds to, music can evoke the emotional self much more readily than the spoken word or than conversation. Or, and it can be used in conjunction with those things to, to create space for people to open up their hearts. Um, to me, you know, you have the brain, the, the brain, the heart, and the soul, and when they're all in alignment, everything's working well. But often, what's stuck is the heart because it's you know because of fear, because of woundedness, because of trauma, because of you know lots of reasons. And uh, until we open that heart and and mm -hmm. access our own vulnerability, it becomes difficult to put ourselves into a hero process. Yes. Because that requires some degree of courage. It requires some degree of willingness to be at risk. Um, mm -hmm. And if the heart is closed, that's a very difficult thing to do. 
Mm -hmm. So music can be an access point into the heart connection. And I call it the compassionate heart, which is when we realize who we really are, we just fall in love with ourselves and everyone else. Mm -hmm. Well, wow. so, you know, that's why not? <laughs> powerful. You know, very interesting that the next lifeline in November, we will have our own Steve, who is a, a, an accomplished lifetime musician and writer, songwriter, and um, another Jamaican producer, writer, musician. And we'll be Wonderful. talking about music and the power of music to um, open our hearts and consciousness. Wonderful. So that, that, that's, uh, that's an awesome way to, to um, introduce the, our next month's lifeline. Thank you for that. Uh, so um, Reverend John, any last um, ideas before we, we close? Um, I think there's another message, yes. Mm -hmm. There's a message. I'm looking. Please a little more about. Oh, about the hero's journey of an organization versus the journey of an individual. Uh, I can mm. just do that oh. pretty quickly. Well, the, the, the hero's journey of an organization is also the hero's journey of every individual involved to the degree they're willing to participate. So I think, again, it, Absolutely. It, are we creating the space to encourage people to follow their hero's journey experiences? Is, is our spiritual community a safe space for that? I, you know, people think of safe space as a place where they won't be disturbed. I think of safe space as a place where you can be disturbed in safety, mm. where, where yes. you, you may <laughs> feel guess. vastly uncomfortable, but you know you're around people that care about you. Yes. And, you know, and yes. that is so critically important. And then when you have that kind of a, an environment where people aren't going to stay away when they're having problems, they're going to show up and have the problems. And, you know, sometimes it's messy. But when you when you can envelop folks that that need that healing energy, then mm -hmm. you can go through an organizational hero's journey with people that, again, are more open hearted and more ready and more. They've had the experience of that safety of of being upset or being um, uncomfortable in that community's uh, embrace, if you will. Awesome. So I think it's oh. both. I think I yes. think you have to have the support in both directions. Mm -hmm. What what happens if you yeah, resist I think sometimes the urge? Sorry, Reverend John. What happens if you resist the yeah. the urge? I mean, you're being pulled in the direction of of your journey. But what what happens if you resist? If you if you don't answer, if you refuse, it's called refusing the call, and the term is you putrefy. Mm. If because <laughs> that part of you that mm. is ready to be expressed gets contained, and it doesn't, it doesn't, it it then tends to get repressed, and it becomes part of our shadow self. Okay. So it's. So when we when you have someone that has refused the call over and over, you find someone who tends to be very bitter, very angry at the world, blaming others for their problems, very difficult. You know that, that yes. just doesn't feel happy and, and ever doesn't think anyone else should be happy because they they have turned inward against themselves. So there is a cost mm -hmm. to turning to to refusing the call or it's stopping anywhere along the way. You know, if Dorothy had stopped at the Wicked Witch's castle, she'd have been stuck in, in Oz or in the poppy field or something like that. And, and that story would have never moved forward. Mm -hmm. So you have to go through the whole thing in order to return with what you have discovered about yourself. OK, awesome. Oh, I like that. Um, um, Carol, willingness to participate in the journey rather than will fullness you petrified oh gosh <laughs> oh, oh, no, it's not an appeal it's not an appealing visual is it but <laughs> oh, putrefied through unwillingness oh you know <laughs> okay well we're, we're we're not be wrapping i think yvonne you had your hand up um but can you just quickly put your your question in the chat uh because we're going to be wrapping up in another minute or so Oh, I, I, the idea of being putrefied doesn't turn me on at all. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So definitely we have to respond to yeah, the answer urge. The call, answer the call. Answer the call. Yes. Answer the call. Yeah. Oh, this has been a delightful and absolutely delightful hour. Well, um, for me too, all too you. soon. Hmm. All too soon. Is there anything you'd like to ask us um, here at the Temple of Light? 
um, Dr. Jim? What well, would you I like just wanna, to know about us? Yeah, I just want to wish you all the absolute best. Uh, I, uh, I've always, you're often on my mind because I, Dr. John, Dr. John, I keep calling him Dr. John, but Reverend John has always been a huge favorite of mine. We have palled around somewhat at a Silomar and some other places. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, <laughs> I just have always had a special place for him in my heart. Oh, and by um, extension, all of you. Oh, thank, thank you, you so much. You know, uh, this uh, is really honored. This, this experience really has opened us up to the world. And it is so good, good to be able to have uh, um, these experiences with um, persons like yourself. Thank you well, so much. Thank you. you know, so um, we're going to wrap up just now. Um, this has been a really, really wonderful hour together. So um, Reverend John, may I ask that you um, extend open sure. uh, thanks to um, Dr. Jim for us? Okay, I extend thanks to you, Dr. Jim. For us. <laughs> and I, I just, I, this door has just flown for me. I've, I've been on, on the the edge of, of my seat, as I'm certain many, many of us have listening, yes. listening to you. And I want to thank you particularly for emphasizing the need for spiritual practice. And please give our, our love to Lady Dorian because oh. she's a living example in your, own, in your own life of practice, practice, practice. When you to be taking out the garbage, but you need, you need to, to also do the work. Um, the work within. I thank you too for that imagery of creation. You know that each time there is growth, there is recreation in our lives, and um, I am certainly going to get up a copy of creating the beloved community and look forward to being the beloved community. A sequel to it. please um, meet your publisher's deadline and do some work. Um, hint, hint. <laughs> hint, hint. Yes. And yeah. all of the whole idea of not just opening minds, opening hearts, Dr. Jim. And I think that is your, your gift of heroism uh, mm. to this, this the science of my movement. And I would like to think that, that we could follow in his footsteps and, and come from the heart, but that is where we access the divinity within us. It's mm -hmm. not a it's not a mental or a cerebral activity. It is it is a heart thing. And thank mm -hmm. you for bringing that to our attention. I want to thank our technical team who bring their hearts to every single lifeline um, episode that we have, and their and their love and their the treasure of their consciousness as well. And I want to thank everybody on call um, who have have contributed has contributed their thoughts, consciousness, their questions. We are on the hero's journey, each of us. And we do bless you, Dr. Jim, all that do a step of our own journey. God bless you and so be namaste. Oh, thank you. Yes. Oh, Reverend John, that was so beautifully expressed. It expresses what's in my heart, what's in the heart of every one of us tuned into this call. This has been an amazing um, experience of enlightenment, upliftment, and understanding of our own role as hero. So um, we'd very much like if you would close us off. Uh, oh, before, before you do, um, Dr. Jim, um, certainly if this experience has been um, uh, an exciting and fulfilling one for you, um, those of you who are uh, tuning on, on, on Facebook Live, uh, we would certainly like you to just uh, hit our donate button and make a contribution to our wonderful Temple of Light and the work that we're doing here so that we can continue the spread of truth. Uh, so just look for the donate.templeoflightcsl.org and you'll find three ways to donate and you can choose the one that works best for you. Thank you so much for joining us and we're going to end with a closing affirmative prayer by Reverend Dr. Jim Lockhart. Okay, and thank you all so much for the loving kindness with which I've been accepted and I'm knowing those donations are just flowing in. So I invite you to join me in consciousness and let's know together that right here and right now, there is only one thing happening and that thing is spirit unfolding, expressing and evolving as each of us and all of us. 
that we are part of the oneness expressing as spirit, as life, as possibility. And I know for everyone within range of my voice that good things are happening within you that are expressing without, that you are bringing the best of yourselves to life, that you are bringing the best of yourselves to your own life, and that you are a benefit, a joy, and a hero to so many others. I know that the Temple of Light in Kingston, Jamaica is a divine idea in the mind of God. I know that it flourishes. I know that it builds consciousness for so many people. I know that it supports it, its own community and the community around it, simply by being the best expression of itself. All of Jamaica is uplifted by the consciousness of the Temple of Light. And I would charge all of you who are members of that temple to be the best versions of yourself, to do your daily spiritual practice, to know the truth, to bring that truth through you into expression for the betterment of all. I give thanks that this is so. I give thanks that this wonderful teaching, the science of mind, is something that we share wherever we are on the globe. And I give thanks that everyone that has shown up for this experience is willing to step away and bring the best of themselves into their life going forward. And I know that this is so, it's happening right now. And I release this word lovingly into that creative field that we call mind, knowing it is done unto us as we believe. And I invite you to say with me, and so it is. And so it joins us. So wonderful. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Mm. Watch them. For there you dwell in my heart of hearts where all is well. The love, the peace, and joy that is spirit expressed. I find his me, dear God, and make manifest. Spirit expressed I find his me